I was sitting at this desk, I was working on this ledger, which I've kept for years. That ledger goes back that far, and I was doing number work, accounting, bookkeeping. Yeah, I was sleeping. It was the East Coast, I was asleep. Being a deputy chief, it had, I had some strong feelings about what was going on. Bright blue skies, it was just crisp, it was beautiful. The boss of where we worked actually brought us in his house and we watched the whole event the rest of the day. We did no more work. We had just gotten through with a um, family reunion in Vancouver, British Columbia, where my husband's family is all from. And uh, we just happened to be at a hotel room in, uh, in um, Seattle, Washington. I was speaking to my wife and we were chatting. She was on our way to the barn and she was listening to the radio and she said, um, you might want to go turn on the television. It was kind of strange seeing it from Knoxville, Tennessee. My first reaction initially is, you know, shocking. Shocking. What, you know, and what do you do now? And what do you do now? It's funny. I remember, uh, you know, funny things about that day. It brings up, you know, memories that you wouldn't normally think of. I was looking to see what is going on. And what was going on was uh, somewhat calamitous and confusing and the network switched over to coverage of what was unknown and misunderstood. And then the whole fear of what they were gonna do, I saw, I saw a lot of that coming. One of my first thoughts and one of my first comments was we're going to war. I didn't, I didn't really understand it, thought it was, I didn't really think it was real, I was, you know, it was early because we were on the west coast, it was like you know, six in the morning or so, and I was like up with my daughter crying. I, I just didn't believe it really. And then when it finally did, be, you know, realized it was happening, I just thought, oh my God, I gotta call my mom. If you read between the lines, it just, you just gotta shake your head, <laughs> you know? It's uh, aggravating. Well, I tried to make calls to the office in New York. We couldn't get any lines through. I did get some calls coming back out to me. I was getting calls out of Florida. Uh, I was getting calls uh, out of Washington. And uh, uh, people were asking me a lot of questions about nothing I had information about. This area has a strong connection to Rockland County, New York, through somebody in Jefferson that brings us down to their big training facility every year. And that's how we got to know these people. Very bad news came to us in, in, as time went on we learned that most of those, all the guys that I knew had passed. We were trying to contact a uh, fellow who uh, is my nephew, he's about my age, and he um, was a uh, officer of the United States Navy, and uh, whose office is in the Pentagon, and we were trying to find him, and his mother, my sister, and I were trying desperately to locate him, we were trying to find a sister in New York. Uh, we were trying to find employees all over uh, for our office in New York. So we spent a lot of time trying to find out where is everyone. It took two days, 48 hours roughly, before we got a handle on where the last person was. Exactly one month before we visited um, the World Trade Tower at the top, and I bought my daughter a bib from the top at the thing. I'm like, exactly one month before that, and uh, it was, it just made me realize, oh boy, you know, you never know what's gonna happen, and it's, yeah, it's scary, especially with having kids, you know? You just, I, I just think about them all the time now, and I think it's made me more protective. I mean, how are we responding to it? We have an ambiguous war, just like the war on drugs. It's, there's not really a reaction rather than just doing something rather than nothing, you know. I think, I think the issues are a lot deeper than, you know, one man or two guys out there in the Middle East. It's, I don't know. So I suppose, no, I don't. I don't think our reaction is responsible or proper in any sense. But I don't have a better solution. I'm not afraid to fly or anything like that. I'm not, you know, I, I don't care if they 
you know, make you not take drinks on the airplanes anymore. I, I welcome that. I think, hey, I don't think it's going to protect us, but I do worry more. If there's a mistake we're making is that I think especially the media hasn't taken this seriously enough. I think that in their infotainment world, they really aren't doing a lot of listening to people that really know a lot of what's going on and trying to find out more and more. I wish they would stop playing politics with it, but I think that we have people assessing this very seriously that unfortunately continue to play games with politics and with journalism and no one's really listening what the real threat is. I, I mostly think about the, the people that were there, that were in the towers, and I just think about them and their families, and because I know how devastating it would be, you know, like I said, with my, I'm very close to my family and my children, and I just, I just can't imagine. The firefighting service is very, very close. We're all brothers and sisters. So we felt very close to those people, not only the ones that we personally knew, but everybody that was down there that had things happen to them. And uh, our thoughts and prayers were with them all the time and everything that we could do for them. I think it's opened a lot of people's eyes in this country that we just can't sit back and take things for granted that because we're the United States and we're in this country, nothing is gonna happen. That's not the case and I think that's opened a lot of eyes.